our topic is purpose is everything okay purpose is everything and this is part two of purpose is everything what i'm going to do is to remind us some of the big ideas that we shared last week i want you to remember them because they are the foundation for this discussion that we are having i told you last week that god is intentional god is intentional okay everything he does is according to his purpose this is something you must have at the back of your mind god is not sentimental god is intentional and everything he does he does according to his purpose okay um the next thing i told you based on that same statement is that god is intentional we were designed to function like him therefore our fulfillment is connected to our individual i mean our intentionality allow me to emphasize that okay this evening god is intentional we were designed to function like god therefore our fulfillment is connected to our intentionality i like to say this to people if you're listening to me right now and you're not as happy as you want to be you are not excited with your life try living intentional you see there's something about saying you are going to do something and then doing it no matter what it is you need to understand that is your design when you decide to do something and you do it it gives you fulfillment you know the bible says that hope deferred makes a heart sick but a, a dream fulfilled is a tree of life okay when your intentions become reality it is deeply satisfying okay god is intentional we were designed also to be intentional the third thing i shared with us powerful principle that you must not forget is that god is intentional his involvement in our affairs will be determined by our alignment with his purpose okay god is intentional and his involvement in our affairs will be determined by our alignment with his purpose of course time will not permit me to recap most of the ideas of the scriptures that we shared last week we established from the bible the fact that god is intentional we also established from the bible the fact that we were designed also to be intentional and then thirdly it was established that god's involvement in our affairs is to the degree to which we are in alignment with his purpose of course you know that popular verse of scripture romans chapter 8 and verse 28 it says that all things work together for the good of them who love god and have the called according to his purpose a translation says that god works out everything for the good of those who love him and who are the called according to his purpose so i said something very profound i don't want you to forget that the primary reason we seek to discover and to live out god's purpose for our lives is to please him you cannot afford to want to live on purpose selfishly okay the primary objective for seeking the purpose of god is not our benefit it is his pleasure he created us he designed us to give him pleasure and what gives god pleasure is when his creation okay functions according to purpose okay when his creation functions according to purpose but then i said to you that when we live according to god's purpose he rewards us with greater opportunities and a deeper dimension of fulfillment that nothing on earth can give us okay that deep fulfillment i'm talking about is the joy of god the joy of god okay from matthew 25 and verse 20 to 21 we looked at the parable of talents and how that the master said to the the, the guy that turned four talents to eight the guy that turned two to four he said well done faithful good and faithful servant he said you have been faithful in little i will make you master over much but over that and over and above that he said come into the joy okay come into the joy of your lord we took time to establish how that the joy of the lord is your strength okay there's something about living a life of purpose 
There's something about knowing that you are doing with your life what God designed you to do with it, okay? It fills you with a deeper dimension of fulfillment that nothing on earth can give, you know? That led me to suggest that perhaps God, I mean, living out our purpose is also one of the ways we fortify, okay, our mental health. Knowing fully well in your heart, this is what God will have me do. I'm doing with my life what God designed me to do. There's just something about it that fills you with joy, that fills you with strength and the boldness to face whatever life is throwing at you. Tonight, I want to start talking about the discovery of purpose. The discovery of purpose, okay? We're going to be very practical about this. Please allow me to read to you from the book of Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2. Let me read it from the New International Reader's Version of the Bible. It says, When God hides a matter, He gets glory. When kings figure out a matter, they get glory. Let me read it again. When God hides a matter, He gets glory. When kings figure out a matter, they get glory, okay? Something you must put at the back of your mind is that purpose is discovered. Or better still, purpose is uncovered. It is not going to fall on your laps. God wants you to exert yourself before he responds by revelation. And that's the reason why most of the time it is the people who invest in research that receive revelation. People who exert themselves. People who press into what God has concealed. And this is the way I like to describe it to people. God has not concealed it from you. He has concealed it for you. There are things buried in you for your glory. There are things concealed by God, okay, for your glory. God gets glory when he covers it for your benefit. You get glory when you search it out. Let me continue this evening by this powerful statement by Ethan Moore. He said, That person is successful who finds what God intended for him to do with his life prepares himself to do it and does it daily to the best of his ability. So it begins with discovery. After discovery now is preparation to fulfill purpose. After that is now living intentionally. So I have established a process that is in three stages. First, you want to understand what the assignment is. Then secondly, the moment when you, I mean, what, the moment you understand what the assignment is, the next thing for you to do is to train, equip, okay, prepare yourself to fulfill purpose. And then the third stage is for you to live every day fulfilling purpose. Let me read the statement again. It will inspire you. That person is successful who finds what God intended for him to do with his life prepares himself to do it and does it daily to the best of his ability. If you are listening to me right now, it means you are in one of these, I mean, three stages. It is either you don't understand purpose, so you've got to do stage one, discover purpose, or better still, uncover purpose. And then stage two are people who understand what God wants them to do with their life. They understand purpose, but they have not prepared themselves or they have not equipped themselves or better still, they have not trained themselves for purpose. Okay, that's stage two. And there are people who have discovered purpose, who have received training for purpose or better still, receiving training for purpose. What those people need to do is to live every day intentionally. This is important. You are either at stage one or stage two or stage three. Whatever stage you are in, there's something to do immediately. Discover purpose, develop yourself to fulfill purpose, or live every day intentionally, okay? Live every day intentionally. So let's get very practical now. How do I discover purpose? The first thing I will need you to know is that when we talk about purpose, essentially, there are two things that we are talking about. There's what we call your generic assignment 
and there's what we call your special assignment okay let me say it again you have what we call your generic assignment you have what we call your special assignment and it is important for you to know which is which now listen a generic assignment is something god designed all of us to do okay a generic assignment is something god designed all of us to do a special assignment is something god uniquely designed and equipped and appointed you to do or uniquely designed equipped and appointed an individual to do let me explain it again a generic assignment is something god designed all of us to do a special assignment is something you know god uniquely designed equipped and appointed an individual to do now listen to this we all have generic assignments okay all of us have this generic assignment is what god designed all of us to do and all of us have special assignments now most of the time when we talk about purpose it is this special assignment okay that we talk about when you say when, when people say have you discovered your purpose do you know your purpose most of the time they are talking about your special assignment but listen your generic assignment is also very important as a matter of fact it is as important as your special assignment okay it's as important as your special assignment i have come to find out that people who are not intentional about their generic assignment don't make the most of their special assignment and so this is what i'm going to do tonight i'm going to spend the rest of the time we have together to show you what i believe is your generic assignment and the next wednesday we're going to be talking about special assignment is that okay Today we talk about generic assignment. Then next week, Wednesday, we talk about special assignment. And this is what I have decided to do. I have decided to use certain words to describe your generic assignment. And what I'm trying to say is, this is me conceptualizing ideas, okay, from the Bible. So you don't want to take this and um, uh, and say this is the way it must be or this is the label you must use for everybody. This is me just trying to help people to understand what generic assignment is. Where did I get this from? They are all from scriptures, but sometimes ideas need to be arranged in such a way that people can easily understand and people can easily apply in their lives. So what I call generic assignment, I have um, put them in in four categories okay or let me say in four four stages or there are four types okay of your generic assignment or better still your generic assignment is made up of four constituents okay because it's your generic assignment one is not more important one is not um, above the other they are all the four of them are equally important and the labels i've chosen are labels to help you understand okay so this is crucial the first one I call it ministry. Ministry. Your assignment is to represent God and his kingdom on earth. Okay, this is important. The first one is ministry. Okay, your purpose is to represent God and his kingdom on earth. I think it is also important, I say at this time, that the teaching I'm presenting tonight is based on a number of assumptions. Number one, that you are a child of God, that you are born again, that you have submitted to your, I mean, you have submitted to the Lordship, okay, of Jesus, because those are the people that this set of teachings, okay, apply to. So first, your generic assignment, the first constituent is ministry. Your purpose is to represent the kingdom of God, okay, on earth, to represent God and his kingdom on earth earth now that is broken into different different elements the first one is it's your purpose to preach the gospel and to reconnect other people with god it is also your purpose to serve fellow believers okay in a faith community with your personal resources and by that i mean your natural and your spiritual gifts your money your time okay and what have you so your first assignment is ministry to represent god's kingdom on earth 
And you do that by preaching the gospel, by reconnecting other people with God. You also do it by serving fellow believers in a community of faith with your personal resources. Now, let's look at that from scripture. Okay, quickly, let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to verse 21. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Verse 20 now says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. This is important. Who are you? You are Christ's ambassador. He says in verse 20 again, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. Verse 21 says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. This is important, okay? Your purpose is to represent God and his kingdom on earth. I call it ministry. You can use any other label to describe it, okay? But it is important for every one of us to know. My first generic assignment is ministry. I represent God wherever I am found. I represent God. How do I do that? I preach the gospel, okay? I share my faith. How do I do that? I serve fellow believers in a community of faith. Let's look at that. It's very important from the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. It says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Okay? So, you are supposed to use your personal resources, your gifts, natural gifts, spiritual gifts, your money, your time. You are supposed to deploy it in service to fellow believers. The Bible there uses an interesting word. It calls you stewards. Okay? A steward is a trustee. In other words, whatever the steward holds, um, a steward holds does not belong to him. He holds it in trust for another person. He administers resources for another person. A principle every believer must understand is that God is our source. Everything we have belongs to God. We are only stewards to administer it according to his purpose. So Paul the Apostle said concerning stewards that a steward must be found to be faithful. A steward must be found to be faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? It means to use what you have give, you have been given for the purpose for which you have been given it. So your talents, your gifts, your times, I mean your time, everything that you have at your disposal was given to you by God so that you can serve him by serving humanity. This is important. Okay, your first generic assignment is ministry. You represent God and his kingdom on earth. Let's move to constituent number two of your generic assignment. I like to call that marriage. Okay, marriage. To be a loving and faithful spouse. To be a loving and faithful spouse. And for those who are still single, it means that your purpose when you are single is to become fit for marriage. We're still talking about generic assignment, okay? What God designed all of us to do. I said the first is ministry. We represent God and his kingdom on earth. Now the second is marriage. Okay, it's your purpose to be a loving and faithful spouse. When you are single, your purpose is to become fit for marriage. This is important. Let's read what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 3. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. Look at what it says. It says, however, each man among you, without exception, is to love his wife as his very own self with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her 
with an attitude of loving kindness. And the wife must see to it that she respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefers him and treats him with loving concern, treasuring him, honoring him, and holding him dear. This is very, very important. Each and every one of us must understand. I have a purpose under God to be a loving and faithful spouse. For the men, it says, love your wife like yourself, as yourself, with behavior worthy of respect and esteem. Okay, I started to talk about that in our service on Sunday, and I'm going to continue, okay, talking about it. When, when there's something called a purpose-driven marriage, and this is what it means, and I'm going to elaborate even on that on Sunday. And it is that the man says to himself, I am in this marriage to fulfill God's purpose. I am in this marriage, okay, to, to execute God's agenda. In other words, I am going to treat my wife in the way God will have me treat her because that's my purpose. The wife also says to herself, I'm going to treat my husband the way God will have me treat him because that's my purpose. And then the two of us together, we are going to face the world and execute God's agenda. So I fulfill purpose in marriage. I fulfill purpose through marriage. This is important. I fulfill purpose in marriage. I fulfill purpose through marriage. And when I am single, I prepare for purpose by getting fit for marriage. This is important, okay? That leads us to generic assignment number three, okay? I like to use the word parenting. Parenting, it's an assignment under God to model godly character for your children, to provide for them, and to train them to become the best versions of themselves. For those of us who are parents already, I want you to read this statement again. Your purpose under God is to be a parent. What does that mean? To model godly character for your children, to provide for them, and to train them to become the best versions of themselves. This is very, very important. And what are we trying to say? Let me back up a little bit, especially for the benefit of those who joined us after we had gotten past, okay, uh, some of the things I said before, just for you to get a picture of what we're saying. Each and every one of us have a generic assignment under God. We have a specific assignment under God. Generic assignment is something God designed all of us to do, and that's what we're talking about tonight. And then your special or specific assignment now is the special thing that God designed, equipped, and appointed you as an individual to do. And I said, your generic assignment is as important as your special assignment. As a matter of fact, if you live and die pursuing only generic assignment, you would have lived a worthwhile life. Some people pursue their special assignment at the expense of their generic assignment, and that's not what you're supposed to do. And then when it comes to your generic assignment, I said it is made up of four constituents. We have um, looked at three of them. We're on the third one right now. We said the first one is ministry. The second one is marriage. The third one is parenting, okay? To model godly character for your children, to provide for them, and to train them to become the best versions of themselves. What am I saying tonight? These are things we were designed to do intentionally. You don't joke with ministry. You don't joke with marriage. You don't joke with parenting. Okay, let's look at what the Bible says. Psalm 127 verse 3 to 5. Psalm 127 verse 3 to 5 says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the gates. My emphasis is on verse 5. It says, how joyful, oh sorry, verse 4, sorry, verse 4. It says, children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. This is important. Children born to a young man are like arrows in 
a warrior's hands okay at least most of us have an idea of archery okay um, our people use bow and arrow if you're going to um, shoot an arrow one thing you must have is precision one thing you must have is a sharp vision okay the distance you can see perhaps will determine the target you can hit and so we need to understand that parenting is not just a biological thing parenting is a spiritual thing okay you know the bible says in proverbs 22 and verse 6 let's quickly read it together proverbs 22 and verse 6 it says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not turn from it train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not turn from it this is such a powerful verse of scripture some of us don't understand okay a lot of people don't understand what it means listen there are people right now in their 30s in their 40s in their 50s there is nothing they can do about their destination in life because of the way they were raised this is important and that's why parenting is very crucial especially in those early stages in those formative stages this is what the bible says there is a way a child should go as a parent you need to know you need to know the moment the parent does not know and that's why vision is important if there's any quality you must develop if you have not developed it you must develop it with a sense of urgency is vision the ability to see beyond the obvious that you don't treat your children just like another person but you can understand their personality you can understand what is in store for them you can understand how far they can go in life so that you can pave the way for them you can prepare them for what is ahead and what the bible says that is very crucial is there is a kind of training a child will receive that when he is old no matter what he is exposed to he cannot depart from his cultivation he cannot depart from his training that is why parenting is very important that is why we must be intentional about it okay there are so many people um you meet some of them with master's degree some of them with a phd and when they speak okay th there's just this way you, you sometimes wonder did this person go to school there is knowledge in their head but the way they communicated was cultivated when they were young and there's nothing they can do about it when they are old that's the truth. You know, it's amazing how they said that if you take a, a, a toddler, okay, um, you take a toddler from, say, Nigeria to Japan, without major effort, the child will master Japanese. Take a toddler to Fran I mean, France, the child will master French. But the older we grow, the more difficult it is for us to learn. And that's the reason why parents must be intentional when their children are young. Okay, you've got to model. It's important. Children don't do what you say. They do what they, they see. So anything you want your children to do, you want to do it. You want your kids to pray, you want to pray. You want your children to know God, you've got to model it for them. As a man, you want your son to be um, sensitive, to be tender with the, the opposite sex. He has to see his father, okay, being tender, okay? He has to see his father respect his mother. The way a man treats his wife is the way his son will treat the female gender. The way a woman treats her husband is the way a daughter will treat the male gender. It's very, very important. If you are irresponsible in front of your children, you see, regardless of what you say, what they see you do consistently is programmed into their subconscious. And when they grow older, that is what they are likely to what they're likely to manifest. It's important. Two statements I don't want you to forget. Children born to a man, to a young man, are like arrows in the hands of the archer. In other words, a parent sometimes can determine how far their children will go in life. A parent can determine how far their children will go in life. So as a parent, you want to be visionary. You want to make sure you see beyond the obvious. You want to make sure you treat your children beyond, you know, treat them beyond the present Okay, prepare them for the future. It's very important. All right. And then the Bible says, train up a, a child in the way the child should go. You need to know the way the child should go. Train them when they are young. And when they are older, I mean, older attacks will come. 
okay? Negative information will come. They will meet with friends. I mean, some of us, when we got to university, we were exposed to so many vices, but we couldn't misbehave because we were trained in a certain way. Sometimes you're about to do something, you will hear the voice of your mother. Sometimes you're about to do something, you will remember, if my parents should hear this, okay? And that's what training is all about, okay? We all have generic assignments under God. And I told you, your generic assignment is made up of four elements or four constituents. The first is ministry. You represent God and his kingdom on earth. The second is marriage. It's your purpose under God to be a faithful, okay, spouse, to be a, 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 to be a dutiful spouse, to be a faithful spouse, a loving spouse, and a faithful spouse. The third one is parenting. Your purpose is to model godly character for your children and to provide for them and to train them to become the best versions of themselves. And of course, the fourth leg of this tool, the fourth element of the first constituents, I mean, constituent of your generic assignment is what I call patriotism. Patriotism. It is your purpose to actively pursue the peace and prosperity of your country. Let me say that again. It is your purpose to actively pursue the peace and prosperity of your country. And I'm, I'm, I need to say it quickly that when I say your country, I mean both your country of origin and your country of residence. And I'm going to show that to you in scripture. Okay, there's a popular verse of scripture that we love to pray with. Okay, Psalm 122 and verse 6 to verse 9. It says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, or the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Okay? This is how a child of God should pray. The peace of the country you reside in, the peace of your country of origin, the prosperity of your country of origin, the prosperity of your country of residence. It's a duty under God. That's why it is part of your generic assignment, something God designed all of us to do. He had, he had, he had something to say. God had something to say to um, the Jews, okay, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. And let me read that to you. Jeremiah 29 and verse 4 to verse 7. Let's read it together. Look at what the Bible says. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage. So that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Now look at verse 7. This is where we're going. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers you too will prosper. Okay, so this is very important. Either your country of origin or your country of residence or your city of residence, okay? You must be patriotic. You must seek the peace and the prosperity of the nation of your origin or the nation of your residence. This is your purpose under God. What have we covered tonight? God is intentional. He designed us to be intentional. When we are intentional, we please God. When God is excited at a person, he rewards the man with greater opportunities and with joy. Okay? Fulfillment. A deep dimension of fulfillment that nothing on earth can provide. And we have said that the primary reason why we seek to live a life of purpose is to please God. Very, very important. Then we said... A purpose can be divided into two. There's what we call your generic assignment. There's what we call your special assignment. A generic assignment is something that God designed all of us to do. 
Special assignment is something that God designed, equipped, and appointed an individual to do. Your generic assignment is as important as your special assignment. And what we have covered tonight is what I call your generic assignment made up of four constituents. Okay, ministry, marriage, parenting, and patriotism. It's on that note that we are going to wrap up the broadcast tonight. Next week, Wednesday, I'm going to teach on the discovery of your special assignment. Okay, so thank you for being a part of tonight's broadcast. 